So I am very thankful that I am elected. Very thankful to be elected. I tend to think and I realize that there are pros and cons to both being, I realize that there's pros and cons to both election versus appointment. I happen to think that election is a far superior way of choosing judges. Now, a lot of people will take issue with that. A lot of people are going to say, well, wait a minute. You know, if you're going to do an election, isn't that problematic? Because then ultimately you're creating a political process in terms of how you're choosing judges. And I would turn that argument and I would say, if we didn't have elections, I would not be serving as a Supreme Court Justice for the state of Michigan. It's just that simple. If we had used an appointment process, I firmly believe that somebody like myself would not be serving in this position and not be given this opportunity. Because what tends to happen when you're doing it as an appointment process is, is that what is used is called the Judicial and Merit Selection Committee, which is they create a merit selection committee and that there's a group of people that get together that decide who they think should be nominated to serve on the bench. The problem with merit selection committees are that merit selection committees for the most part are composed of people and choose people who look like them, who sound like them, and for all intents and purposes who are them. What do I mean by that? The idea of a blind person coming before a merit selection committee, they would probably look at someone like myself and they would say, oh wow, that is so inspiring. I'm so inspired by this blind person coming before us. I'm so inspired by this blind person thinking they could serve as a Supreme Court justice. And they would say all the accolades, they'd say all the nice things, but as soon as you leave and the doors close, I am willing to bet the decision would go something like this. That is so great that this blind person is applying to be a judge. But you know what? This is going to probably be too difficult a job for him. This is going to be too challenging for him. This is going to be too hard for him. This is going to be something that I just don't think he's going to be able to do. I mean, how is he going to understand the evidence? How is he going to interpret the materials that come before him? How is he going to appreciate a crime scene? You know, they would say, they would look at all the negatives and they would say, you know what? I really think this is great that he thinks he can do this, but I think it's better for us to go with a safer option. I think it's better for us to go with a safer alternative. I think it's better for us to go with someone who is more like us. The beautiful thing about an election is the people of the great state of Michigan get to decide who is going to serve on their Supreme Court. Not a group of people, the entire state. And what excited me about that was when election does, is it requires you to go out and spend time with people. It requires you to travel across the great state of Michigan. It requires you to go from county to county. It requires you to go from factory to factory. It requires you to go from city to city. It requires you to go from place to place. It requires you to get in your car and start driving and meet the people that you serve. Meet the people that you represent. So often, judges will often say, well, this is how we do things in my courtroom. And I always tell judges whenever they use the word my courtroom, that's incorrect. It is not your courtroom. You don't own it. You're a servant of the people. It is the people's room and you serve them. And what elections do is it allows for people to have a chance to interact with you. It allows for people to spend time with people with, with you. It allows people to relate to you and to connect with you. It allows for you to have an understanding and an appreciation of the people that you serve and the people that you represent. And in my situation, when I ran for this position, it was one of the most difficult elections you could possibly ever go through. And the odds were definitely kind of stacked against me. But the way that it works is each party nominates their candidate. So I was nominated by the Democratic Party, and then I faced off with a Republican who was nominated by their party. But it's a full-fledged statewide contest. You have television ads, you have radio ads, you have direct mail, you have robocalls, you have a full-fledged campaign. 
And I don't think there's any better way to do it. I don't think there's any better way to do it. Because really what that did was it allowed for me to not just sit up in my office and be isolated and far removed, but it requires you to really connect with people. It requires you to understand them. It requires you to empathize with them. It requires you to get to know them. It requires you to realize the significance of the people that you're serving and that those who that you get to represent. So I think that while both systems might have their pros and might have their cons, I am a firm believer in the electoral process for state Supreme Court judges because I will tell you this wholeheartedly. If we didn't have an election, I wouldn't be a justice today.